welcome to our channel. Uh, this is one of the first solo runs from me. Pernille is still in Denmark, she's coming back in two weeks. So then you will have her back and perhaps it will be a bit more professional. <laughs> but uh, we thought we still try and make a video. And since it's winter, we thought we're gonna talk about living on a boat in winter and how you can make it a bit more enjoyable. At least in our view or in our experience, because we have spent three years and three winters on Doriman in Denmark, in Copenhagen. So we have gone through quite some uh, cold and we might have a few tips uh, you hopefully find useful. So stay tuned for them. So obviously it all starts uh, pretty much where you want to spend your winter. So you kind of have to choose wisely how far north or in which place. It all plays its role, so if you go pretty far north uh, you have to be prepared to suffer a bit more. Uh, but even more important is to find a good spot, either you're on anchor or you're in a harbor. It, it really helps if it's really well protected, you don't have a constant swell or constant wind uh, on the boat during this time squeaky lines or rolling boat won't be fun um, cold is one thing but having a very bad place where the boat is won't make it any better so choose wisely another thing that's also important when you choose the place is that there are other people other people you can potentially meet and befriend because <laughs> simply put suffering together with others uh, is much better I mean, you talk about it, you laugh about it, you improve, you find ideas, you get together, you have something to talk about. And we had much fun in Copenhagen. There were more boats that were liverboards. So it, it was fun, you know, you, even a little small talk here and there, uh, maybe a beer or uh, something on another boat. You know, you talk about your struggles and it, it doesn't feel like you're completely alone being that weird or living on a boat in the cold so uh, try and find a great community and that will help a lot and yeah a nice harbor perhaps with good facilities uh, with good opportunities to shop but also where you can do other activities so you can yeah maybe hit a gym or hit a climbing wall or do anything you know that gets you out of the boat and of course also a harbor with good facilities where you can uh, get electricity, you can wash your clothes, you can uh, dry your clothes. You may actually have a little uh, library or something where you can hang out when it's really rough so you don't have to be confined in the boat all the time. Another pretty uh, important thing that really upgraded our experience, it's actually not that impressive but it's actually where I'm sitting right now our little cockpit tent enclosure like it's not the most expensive thing but it's really helps you know you have a little extra space like here where you can sit you can have uh, some shoes you know some bags you know it doesn't rain in it might get a bit wet but it, it stays mostly dry you don't have the rain coming down your companion way it really really helps and right now even though outside is like 10 degrees as soon as the sun shines it's like a little uh, like a little greenhouse it gets super warm in here you open the door the companion way and it actually dries out the boat really fast and yeah like on days like this you have an extra room you get actually really warm out here it's like over 20 degrees in here I'm nearly <laughs> sweating it's super nice, like especially in places where the sun comes actually out. Plus, if it's made well, you can actually sail a little bit with it. Like, I wouldn't, we prefer not to go into, you know, narrow passages or going into harbor with it. But if it's like a decent, nice sail where everything is more or less under control, it's super nice. It, it makes the boat, makes sailing so much more comfortable. It's like sitting you know, in a car and with heating on it, it just makes everything so much better. And believe it or not, this little extra space you gain, you know, that you can have your shoes, you can have your bags, you can even use it as a fridge in winter if it gets really cold. <laughs> so it's, it's perfect. If you have one, 
definitely set it up and if you don't and you're planning to go north like it's so such a good thing to have it really really helps another thing that is quite necessary if you're living abroad in winter or in the off season it requires for you to have a an electricity connection or really really good batteries or a generator is to have a dehumidifier like this I don't know anyone who was living in the harbor who hadn't had one it's just necessary because the space is so small you're constantly breathing uh, humidity into the boat you're cooking uh, and everything gets humid really fast so make sure you have at least one good quiet dehumidifier somewhere ideally it could drain uh, either in its little bucket or we had it drain in our bilge so we don't have to empty it because it easily got two or three liters of water every day so just us breathing and maybe cooking so that helps keep to keep most of the boat dry and it's really really necessary unless it's not so cold and you can air like or using the cockpit tent also helps but it's great to have it it's great also if you're cooking you put it on so it, it all the steams does not go too far into the boat uh, yeah get one <laughs> it's really helps change of scenery <laughs> the next most important one of the more important thing is if you can try to insulate the boat as best as you can so we have used nearly 18 square meters of armor flex it's a, a with adhesive on so you just peel it off and you can stick it wherever you want uh, we mostly have put it on the exposed uh, surfaces of the hull so for example sorry for the shake like we unscrewed all of these woods here and then uh, took them off and behind there is the exposed hull and we glued it all on here and underneath the water line underneath the floor so we have around 18 square meters uh, and that makes things much better like it avoids a lot of the condensation happening on the hole and running down so it's really really good I guess we used only 9 or 10 millimeters because there isn't much space for it uh, I guess the insulation properties are not like wow but it, it does certainly a little bit and it's mostly to avoid this condensation happening everywhere also we have it in our cupboards like uh, I don't know if you will be able to see it like just here in the back that's the armor flex it's nice and gray it has uh, oh, here it's actually coming down oops uh, it has antibacterial antimicrobial properties so you avoid getting mold you know uh, wherever there's contact like if you have your food or clothes uh, in contact with just the hull you will have a mess if you have a layer of armor flex you avoid the condensation and you avoid getting mold and everything another great thing I found are those polycarbonate plates I think they're eight millimeters so you can buy the sheets in a roll, quite cheap, and then you can just cut them. And I used those uh, for our hatches, so our hatches were permanently closed in winter. So these just screw on here. Uh, and actually we were quite lucky because if you have a look, you can see that this is an extra little plywood. So you take this off and you put it in between. And it did actually uh, seal pretty pretty well, so there was no more condensation at all on our windows. If you take those off and it's zero degrees, things are going to be dripping on your head constantly at night and it's going to be a mess. And just this little sheet and you're perfect, there's nothing no more. You might need to open the hatch once every three months and uh, get a little bit out of the condensation that builds in between but that's it it's perfect we also had done it for the little side windows like here uh, and we basically just used armor flex <laughs> to build a little frame around it and stick another side so we don't have all this water running down from the glass makes sense it really helps like it doesn't cost much it's a bit of a work of course you can't open the hatches anymore but uh, 
in minus degrees in Denmark you don't want to do that you open the the companion way you have your uh, dehumidifier running and you get some circulation that way so the next thing is how you're gonna keep the boat warm in winter we started with a, a diesel heater a hot air blower from Webasto it was the original one it worked really well it wasn't too loud it was making the air really nice and dry uh, but on constant use they are not super great like they're not perhaps the most efficient uh, but honestly I think it's the best still the best solution if you are willing to burn diesel <laughs> we then uh, because it kind of uh, started breaking I had this idea to become more efficient and build a hydronic system so actually with uh, warm water and radiators and we bought a uh, Vibasto thermal see uh, and then uh, bought some small radiators like these ones and installed one here one in the bedroom and one in the toilet as a towel dryer very fancy <laughs> and it worked quite well it doesn't dry the boat out that much which is a downsize side the the only problem is on a small boat like that it's not the best prop the best solution because uh, you don't have enough space to put big enough radiators to get the heat output you want so uh, I think the the Vibasto C is like five kilowatts of heat output and we only have like two and a half kilo or even less of heat output from the radiators. so that means uh, it starts idling and you can't get rid of the heat enough through the radiators so then we bought a a heat exchanger that would blow hot air that never really worked well and it was noisy so it was sort of a failure we haven't yet really admitted but I'm think now uh, we're gonna get rid of it we we want the boat a bit lighter and uh, we have to come up with a new solution instead of having all these radiators it was a huge work it cost a lot of money but sometimes you have to admit it wasn't a great idea so if anyone wants a thermal <laughs> top C in good condition let us know <laughs> it might be for sale soon so a bit more about our heating system because even though it didn't work we're quite proud of it we actually yeah, had a towel dryer it would actually warm up the water as well in the boiler uh, and even the engine so the engine uh, would stay warm so it would circulate through the fresh water system it was kind of one so it would circulate through the fresh water system of the engine, warm up the boiler for warm water and the radiator. So actually the engine was also kind of radiating heat into the boat. Uh, that was great. On the same time, when you engined a lot, it would also heat up the boat if you want to. So if you engine a lot, it would actually, the cooling system would make the radiators warm. Uh, that was kind of nice. Uh, but as I said, there were limits to the whole system because it would have needed way bigger radiators Which we didn't really want to fit or could fit, but if you can fit them It's definitely one of the best ways to heat your boat So anyway, I mean uh, to have something that heats the boat even if you're not plugged in it's great But we also always had a little uh, electric radiator because most of the times it it's a bit more expensive maybe because electricity is quite expensive in most countries but sometimes it's not and it's the cleanest way it's probably the safest and uh, it's you don't need to invest anything and uh, you can probably find one somewhere for for very cheap or free and then by the end of the season you you give it to the next one or you store it uh, and it always works kind of thing except you if you're not on the harbor so I think going forward we're either going to have uh, a solution like this or maybe again a hot uh, air blower because it makes the boat dry and it works fast. So you actually, you don't need the boat warm while you're sleeping, you just need it warm in the morning to get up. Then the sun comes up, you have the heating from the cockpit tent and you can be out of the boat for a bit. You can make it cozy for half an hour and just five minutes of running it, it dries the boat out uh, and it's the best solution I think. It's still dirty as hell burning diesel but if you can fit a wood stove like sailing Kadoa it's also a great option if they allow 
you to do it in the harbor but believe me there's a lot of wood any everywhere to to take and it's probably the greenest way to go <laughs> yeah so now we kind of covered the basics and I mean they're pretty obvious that you need a heat thing you need to insulate blah 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 I mean uh, but some factors that also play a major role is like make the boat really cozy you know make it cozy buy some good blankets uh, Penilla would give me points for that for saying that you know buy some nice candles or some little lamps you know that it's cozy and nice and that you feel welcome and warm you know that that makes a whole different buy a good uh, sleeping duvet so you do it so you warm when you're sleeping or all of that you know and, and and engage with the community you know have some uh get togethers on on the boat or another boat so it it kind of gives you a little bit uh it breaks a bit the the routine of suffering <laughs> and you you enjoy and you you suffer with others it's always great some other obvious things you need to to really consider is uh try to avoid creating too much humidity in the boat yes how you do that uh, i mean Obviously, try not to shower if if you can find a place where you can shower out of the boat because all of that water, uh, this humidity will stay in the boat quite long and you need to get rid of it. So try to avoid it altogether. Try to find some recipes that uh, maybe bake more uh, and try to get maybe a fast cooker you know that keeps the steam inside i mean if you boil pasta for 10 minutes in the boat with the open lid uh, you can imagine there's going to be half a liter of water just from that so try a bit uh, with that i mean obviously drying your clothes in the boat might you might not have an alternative but try to avoid it uh, yeah it's quite obvious but little things like you don't want too much humidity because uh, no matter what you do, things are gonna get a bit molly, and that brings me to our ne to my next or our next point is uh, take care of your belongings. If you have some very fancy shirts or some fancy clothes or books that you really love, uh, either give them to friends somewhere or in a storage unit, or make sure they're away from anything uh, touching uh, a cold surface like the hull or anything. We used a lot of plastic bags or plastic or any box to put them in, seal them, so they stay uh, kind of away from the moisture. Anything like some of our jacket touching the hole, they get all moldy, super disgusting. You need to spend a few days just cleaning them and it's no fun. But no matter how careful you are, it will happen. It happens to everyone. Not everyone admits it though. <laughs> So yeah, take care of that and don't get too stressed about it. Uh, vinegar is your friend, so if you have mold vinegar or some light uh, chlorine solution uh, will clean it pretty well. But yeah, it's not the healthiest thing to have in your boat, unfortunately. So yeah, I, this is a bit of a different video. I mean, uh, I, I hope it, it was watchable. I know. Uh, I. I mix it up sometimes and I don't make complete sense but maybe I'll get better so I hope some of the tips work for you and uh, as a conclusion I mean living on a boat in winter or off season uh, is not great it's that's why we call it a bit of suffering I mean it's no joke but uh, you might have your reasons to do it we had our reasons to do it we needed to save up money and uh, in the end we kind of enjoyed it we made a lot of friends in the harbor we were always close to the water we could take up our sub and go paddling go kite surfing you know talk to people who were also and become part of the community and in that way it made it quite enjoyable and actually you forget a bit about the suffering and as long as the boat is cozy and nice and the harbor is good and you can get a warm shower it's not that bad but uh, there will be days where it's stormy. I remember one New Year's, it was super stormy. We were rolling in the boat. It was like minus two. Yeah, uh, you drink a little bit and from the rolliness you get even more sick. So uh, there will be days like that where you, where you get a little bit seasick in the boat. 
<laughs> it's not great, but it's part of the plan. And there are other days where the sun is shining, like today, for example, you sit out here, you, you, you watch the nature and you take, you just throw in your paddleboard and you're out in the nature. And yeah, you're always on your boat. And whenever it's good weather, you just remember to also take the boat out. And even in winter, you can go to a different harbor next by, to a bay for the weekend. It's worth it. If you have a plan uh, for that you need to be in the north or somewhere cold, uh, it's it's going to work out. Do not worry about it too much. Be prepared, but uh, it's, it's definitely adventure. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you liked it. I hope, uh, yeah, soon Panella will be back and we, we, we can do some more exciting uh, little adventures but in the meantime let us know if there's any if you have any questions uh, please help us you know grow so share it wherever you can if you like it of course if you don't like it tough luck and hope to see you soon oh. like share and subscribe bye bye Kai bye ah. uh. So if you're still with us and you still have patience, we have a little bonus adventure for you because this video was kind of uh, lame <laughs> in terms of adventure. So behind me there's a little island with a monastery, it's abandoned, but there are some sheep and a lonely abandoned dog. I mean somebody feeds it, but I have a mission since a few weeks now. Uh, I always sup there with my dad and we bring him a little bit uh, extra. Uh, food, but he's still very wary of us He kind of likes Kai, but Kai's av avoiding him So today we're gonna try again bring him another canned food and see if maybe uh, Kai will play with him and we can slowly befriend him and make his life a little bit less lonely because He is alone on this whole island with just some goats. So that's not funny for the dog and he's a cute one and he's deaf so we can't really calm him down so it's quite a poor thing but uh, yeah he seems healthy and fat but yeah, we all need a bit of company so let's see if we can befriend him before we leave again so we made it to the island the doggo is down there he's fine actually I. I just met the guy who, a lovely human who actually volunteers and comes here and feeds him on his own coast, plus the goats in, in summer and gives them water. So he's well off, he's just a bit alone. So the plan is to try and force a friendship with Kai, but Kai is not very interested, but, but the other dog will constantly bark if I go ashore, but if only Kai is ashore, he's actually quite happy. Happy? Happy. He's actually quite happy with Kai and wagging his tails and... So I'm gonna let Kai out, which won't make him happy, and then hopefully they can interact a bit. Right, Kai? You wanna do that? No. So Kai's not too happy about that. I'll pick you up, don't worry about it. Yeah, you can't be too worried. Cook. Coward, he ran to the pier. Now he's waiting. <laughs> You should be getting friends with him. And he's hiding, he's very scared. Alright, this attempt was a failure. They Yesterday they at least sniffed each other, this day... Today they didn't even get close. He's standing there. Maybe I need to bring more dogs. Successfully mi failed mission today, Kai. 
And that's where we have the boat, the bay.